Thanks a lot for coming, Chris. Yeah, most, most of the time I feel like a, a complete lone wolf in what we do because no one else does anything like it. Um, but here I always feel kind of at home. So this is my group at Temple University, uh, kind of small right now after COVID. Um, organic chemistry, sorry. Uh, so what we do is we're making these unnatural building blocks that are um, rings and they have groups on them that can connect up to other building blocks through pairs of bonds, pairs of amide bonds, easiest bond to make. And they have a functional group hanging off of them. So when we link them together, we create these stiff sort of segments that are about two nanometers long. They're uh, maybe, you know, the DNA and the proteins are about four or five, you know, maybe tens of nanometers long. These are down at two. And um, in the last, um, uh, three years, we've gotten a lot of investment from the Department of Defense. We've made uh, about 1,200 of these kind of molecules, and we've assembled them into two and a half million molecules where we link multiple segments together to create these molecules that are like a claw. And the goal here is to create things that can bind proteins to create uh, diagnostic devices that could replace lateral flow assays like COVID tests for all the different things that the DOD is concerned about. They don't like proteins because proteins go bad over the course of a couple of months. They have to replace all their lateral flow assays. So we're, we're, we're developing these kind of molecules. Um, other applications for our molecules is I've started a company and we're going to be developing them as therapeutics. We just published a paper earlier this year where we made these triangular, link three of them together, make these rigid triangles, and then polymerize them into thin films. And I think we could do things like separate uranium from seawater, separate palladium pl from platinum, separate rare earths from each other. Lots of separations could be done. Atomically precise membranes could do that. Uh, tie multiple segments together to create little pockets where you can speed up chemical reactions trillion fold to make things, to make fuel and food and, and feedstocks for all the things that, you know, that, that people need. Uh, that is the most important thing that biology does with enzymes. I want to do that with, with our spiroligomers. We have made some catalysts with our molecules. We can uh, make pockets that could bind, you know, these forever chemicals, perfluorinated compounds, to make sensors, make sensors for all sorts of things. Uh, put them down on electrodes and, and make sensors that would last for decades. Uh, set them up, forget about them, and then when the thing comes along, they, they detect them. And then uh, I, a bunch of these kind of pictures came up, thank you, uh, for, for building building blocks, bigger bricks to assemble into atomically precise nanotechnology. Um, I said that we just published this earlier this year where we made these triangular molecules and we, we used interfacial polymerization to, uh, to polymerize them into thin films. There's two of the molecules in thin films and we showed that they could selectively filter things. Now what we want to do is build groups inside of here that point inward to selectively bind metals uh, to you know, do things like separate uranium, pull uranium and lithium out of seawater. Um, I've started a startup that's funded by the Department of Defense that, that has scaled all this stuff up. Um, we have made all of these building blocks in gram quantities. Uh, they're stereochemically pure, and they are all set up so that we can assemble them on robots. So we assemble them one building block at a time on robots, and we've just gotten a robot that can make 74 of these every two days. And so we're going to start cranking these out. We make tens to hundreds of milligrams of them, and every one of them is absolutely atomically precise. We know where every group is in space. We can control the shape. We can control what functional groups are on them. Um, yeah, we've made 1,200 of them. And um, I've developed software to predict their three-dimensional structures. Because they're fused rings, you can, anyone can predict it with a, you know, organic one level knowledge and a plastic molecular modeling set. What this software does is it builds millions of them in the computer and scores them based on how well it can organize groups for specific applications. And the idea is to, um, that ties into this meeting, is to make these segments so that they link together and then they have groups on them so that they can cross link into these tight little stiff bundles that are the size of small proteins but are you know, cross-linked so many times that they're almost like little diamond bricks. And they'll have groups on the outside that point in just the right direction with just the right groups. So when you mix them together, 
or you mechanically bring them together, they will lock together through multiple covalent bonds and allow you to build up larger structures where you still control where every atom is in three-dimensional space. It's going to take some work to get to this, but this is a shovel-ready project. We can do this now. I just need money, people, and the resources. I know how to do this. Um, I have been working, uh, because we have so many different chemical groups and we can put them together in so many different ways, for the last 20 years I've been developing software. It's about a million lines of code. It's got its own compiler built into it. And um, the goal here is to give a very brief description of, a, of the building blocks of the fragments, and then the software automatically builds up a database of three-dimensional structures to train uh, uh, and build, extract the database that you can then use to build uh, larger structures. So it's like what protein design people have for in, in, in Rosetta. Uh, you have the protein data bank, you know, hundred, tens of thousands of protein structures have been determined over decades. Uh, I don't have that. I have to build everything up from first principles. So that's what this software does. You describe this thing, it's kind of like Smiles, but it's a little expanded. Uh, it describes the building block. You describe how these building blocks can connect together, like a grammar, and then it builds, uh, for this current set, 683 little training molecules. It does exhaustive conformational searching on very large cluster computers. It takes about 50,000 CPU hours to, to do the searching. It extracts a rotomer database. It's just like the rotomer database that the protein design people use, but handles all these weird building blocks. And then we want to take uh, that Rotomer database, the scoring function, and do the, use the exact same kind of tools that Rosetta uses, but design these molecules with it to uh, solve particular problems, like create a uh, molecule you know, triangle with multiple groups pointing inwards so that they can coordinate to a uranium oxide uh, ion and bind it tightly. Then you could make a gram of this, throw it in the ocean, and it will um, soak up uranium and not vanadium, for instance. Um, there's lots of applications for this technology. We're building it from the ground up. And uh, yeah, that's all. Like that. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. So it looks like your building blocks might be four monomers uh, in length. Is is is? Can you make longer ones? Yes, we've 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 done up to eight. Uh, those are then like four nanometers long. Uh, we stick with four now because that gives us about two nanometers, which is about the width of a protein. I think it's where small molecules become interesting molecules, where they get big enough to to be specific enough that they can bind to things specifically. So we're just trying to build up out of organic chemistry into nanostructures. So with this type of chemistry, how do you favor the formation of the macrocycles uh, opposite to forming oligomers or something different there? And what's so it's a lot of planning and building just the right structure that will only make that structure. Uh, but it, and it's a little difficult to describe without a chemistry lecture, but it's, it's really just building things up and matching distances and angles, and then they just go together. It's sort of like self-assembly, but you can do that self-assembly with covalent bonds. And you don't need any catalysts? No. No. This is all driven chemistry. Cool. Then our prompt, how do you think it may fit into any one of the structures? I mean, So that, that thing I wrote in 2007 basically touches on one top, you know, approach one, two, and three. Uh, this could fit into all of those. And four, I think, is really just a question of scale. I mean, in approach four, you're using small molecules. I think you have to, the, 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 I'm, I'm trying to make bigger molecules where the forces relative to the size of the molecule and the precision you need are a little smaller, so you don't have to fight them as much. Um, so work with for, the chemical forces rather than fighting them. Uh, that's kind of the approach that uh, we're trying to take. Any think. comments on that, on the discussion prompt? Yeah, I know that's a little uh, controversial, but um, sure. Okay, thank you so much, Chris. <laughs> Wonderful.